trooper. I'm exhausted. We've been riding 17 days and still no sign of Indians. Mm. I gotta grab some sleep. Okay, General. Look, you, you stand on guard. And if you see Indians, just wake me. Sure thing, General. Okay. General, General, what? what? General, what? Engines on the horizon. What? How big did they look? Oh, about so big, General. Uh, they're half an hour away yet. Wake me later. Uh. General, General, oh, what? what is it now? Engines are getting closer. How big did they look now? Oh, about, about so big, General. Still 15 minutes. I'm going back to sleep. Oh, it's better. General, what? General, what? The engines. They're all around us, General, surrounding us. How big did they look? They're, they're full size Indians, General, full of grown. Right. This is what you do. You go between the two wagons. You find the chief. He's the guy with the feathered headdress. You shoot him, and the others will run away. I can't do that, General. Why not? Well, I've known him since he was that big. <laughs> Kevin Michael Simmons, you were chartered on the 15th of January. At the sub-post office in Ponders Road, you did four century two and steal the contents of the blockbuster gobstopper machine on the wall outside. <laughs> How do you plead? Is that a slur slur? <laughs> what? Ah, not guilty. <laughs> Very good. Uh, try standing on your chair. Ah, that's better. Now, a counsel for the prosecution, proceed. I'd like to call Constable PC Nobbs of the Scotland Yard Kiddies Squad. I would also like to point out that having worked with juveniles for so long, it has inevitably left its mark on PC Nobbs. Mm, yeah. Call Constable PC Nobbs. Call Constable PC Nobbs. Call Constable PC Nobbs. This is not coming out. <laughs> what? <laughs> Since he's not coming out to you, so please. <laughs> Very well, please. He says, say it nicely. Oh, this is preposterous. All right. Please. I've done my own work. It's just a page, Constable. Hi, pro, pro, Mike. No, 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 promise. Oh. Uh, promise to tell the truth. No, no, the truth. Next word, the, the, the. The, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Ah, well done, well done. So help me go. God. Uh, God. Good. PC Nobs, could you tell us exactly in your own words what happened on the morning of the 15th? Yes, sir. Well, acting on information given to us by uh, an informant known as Thomas... Uh, no, I'm sorry, Constable. You'll have to give us his full name. Uh, Thomas who? Oh, uh, Thomas the Tank Engine, sir. <laughs> Anyway, acting on uh, Thomas's information, uh, me and three of my colleagues... Which three colleagues, Constable? Uh, PCs George, Zippy and Bungle, sir. <laughs> anyway, we were positioned opposite the post office in Ponders Road. Were you on foot, Constable? Uh, no, sir. We was on an unmarked police skateboard. <laughs> yes. Anyway, it was about 10.42am, uh, sir, when we saw the accused there forced entry into the said gobstopper machine. No, I didn't, you big Nancy. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Did, 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 did a zilly dabs with not got... Please. Anyway, I've got a rabbit. Constable. <laughs> please, please continue with your testimony. No, oh, sir. I'm sorry. When we confronted the accuser, he pulled out a catapult and shouted, All right, copper, this is where you get yours. Whereupon, I took immediate action. What was that? I'd done a plop in my pants. <laughs> and then what? Oh, then he, he flicked a huge bogey at me, sir. And he said to me, he said, we're going to get me, sir. I smoked the ginger biscuits. And I said, OK, you, you can't do it to me. Like constable, constable. He was telling me, well, I've done a plop in my pants. Please, please, look, look. I, I, you can have baked beans for tea. <laughs> With sausages. Yes, all right, then, yes. 
spaghetti hoops. Go on then, go on then. I'm sorry. Anyway, sir, we, we gave chase, apprehended, and cautioned the accused. Yeah. Well, well, time to sum up. One, two, 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 two's a four, <laughs> three, two's a six. Kevin Michael Simmons, I find you guilty as charged. Ah, go you! <laughs> this is a very, very serious case, and I have no alternative than to sentence you to the maximum penalty allowed. What's that, Your Honour? I'm going to smash your face in! <laughs> <laughs> Who's that prop now? <laughs> Hey. <laughs> and now we come to lot 53, a very fine piece, I'm sure you'll agree. This was a bank. It's all, it's all trust me. Uh, this exquisite porcelain figure, 18th century Italian, what am I bid? Hands up! <laughs> hands up. Any advance and hands up. Hands up and down. Hands up and down. Thank you, madam. This is a hold up. Oh, my goodness. Shut up. Help! Help! Go on, Lemmy. Give me the old one, oh. two. The old one, two. Thank you, sir. The old two, three. The old two, three, I'm bid. Help! Go on, let me give her what for. What five? What six? <laughs> That's more like it. What six? Any advance on what six? Someone get the police. Yeah, do something. It's all right. We're supposed to be robbing a bank. <laughs> for getting that statue knocked down for what six? Oh. That's dirt cheap. Trust me. Now, remember, ladies and gentlemen, this figure is from the 18th century. 19th century. 20th century. 20th century, Fox. Thank <laughs> you, sir. It's against you, madam. A 20th century Fox. See? A 20th century Fox. Going once, going twice, going three times. Four times. <laughs> Trust me. Four times. Five times. Six times. Uh, seven times. <laughs> Someone get the police down. Nine, nine, nine. Uh, ten, ten, ten. <laughs> Now you're talking. Jack, Jack, Jack. Queen, Queen, Queen. King, King, King. Come on, Pierce. Come on, Levy. Wait, it's still with you, sir. A King, King, King. Attempted robbery. You're going to five stretch for this. Eight. Six stretch. Seven stretch. Eight stretch. Here, what are you saying? Trust me. Nine stretch. Going, going. Go for a nine stretch. <laughs> Who's next? Uh, it's the Reverend T. Book and Evil. Reverend? Yeah, um, he's a stamp vicar. Oh, right. I oh, will show him in. Okay. Uh, just about, Mr. Twingley. I'd like to thank you for giving me this chance. When I left the tax office to join the circus, I thought I'd be cleaning animals out. <laughs> Didn't realise I'd be getting a starring role. <laughs> oh, think nothing of it, lad. And may I say, you look grand, you look the part, are ah, you? Get a lot of laughs like that, ah. Um, it's just one thing, though, Bobo. Um, do you think uh, do you think the helmet will fit on top of the wig? <laughs> helmet? Uh, uh, what helmet? Uh, for the human cannonball. <laughs> I, I thought you had a human cannonball. Ah, oh, well, we did have, oh, oh. What, what happened to him? He, he went off early. Oh. <laughs> Was he poorly? Well, he is now, oh. are <laughs> well, I'm going to fire him anyway. Oh. So, if uh, you wouldn't mind stepping into the breach. <laughs> stepping into the breach, yeah. <laughs> Not at all, Mr Twingling. Anything to help out. Good, good, good. <laughs> Bobo, listen. How are you with heights? 
Hi, oh, oh, very good, Mr. Twingling. Why? You see, we're, we're a man short with the trapeze act. I, I thought you uh, had two people. Aye, oh, but uh, I had to let one of them go. <laughs> well, I didn't personally, no. It, it, it was his partner. <laughs> Did they uh, fall out? In a manner of speaking, <laughs> no. Oh, oh, oh. Well, um... Anything to help out. Good, good, because it's a nice night out there and Franco's arthritis is coming along fine. <laughs> well, well, if he drops me, there's always the safety net. <laughs> <laughs> you do have a safety net, Mr. Twingling. Uh, 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 well, well, we did have. Oh, oh, we did have, you see, uh, the human cannonball. I whoosh. <laughs> oh, dear, that's very selfish, uh, Mr. Twingling. My very thoughts like that. Anyway, listen, hey, it's the clown act first, and boy, you look grand, eh? <laughs> we'll get out there and give them what for, yeah. eh? Go on, make them laugh. Hey, well, well, watch that banana skin. <laughs> we don't want any accidents, do we? <laughs> So you're one of them. Time to meet your host. Ah, oh, Mr. Bond. Come in. If it isn't my old friend, Dr. Nose. <laughs> that, I'm not mistaken, is golf finger. <laughs> like the swing. What's your handicap? You are, Mr. Bond. Or perhaps you'd prefer some laser surgery from Dr. Nose. Oh. Did you pick that yourself? <laughs> oh, my own personal favourite. I believe you knew Miss Honeyfang. <laughs> she seems to have lost weight. I think I'll choose the fish course. <laughs> Why not come in? The water's really lovely. Just a minute. You're not Venus Flytrap. No, I'm from the CIA. Of course. Foxy Bunker. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you look ridiculous, Ben. Will you stop for a second? I haven't had a first yet. <laughs> we only have two minutes to go, Bond. If you don't find the secret HQ of Smirsh, all will be lost. You're right, sir. Follow me. Well? Correct. <laughs> if only we had a bomb. Remember this, sir? They tried to kill me with it at the cricket pitch. I think I'll give them their ball back. Huh. Ding dong dell. Priss is in the well. 
to escape, honey penny. I pretended to be a skeleton, sir. Brilliant. So, what time is this fancy dress party? About eight o'clock, sir. Plenty of time. Yes. Where's Bond, though? Oh. He does like his little dinghy. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> Alone at last, Poppy. Yes, Basildon. With you and me, the sky and the sea. What was that? Oh, nothing. Just some goldfish. Goldfish? My dear wife seems to be quite tired out by the journey. No need to apologize, my dear fellow. Uh, Your good lady had told me that she had had a tiring day with the children, and then there were the domestic chores and so on. Yes. And I've often observed that after a sustained burst of physical activity, the soothing ambience of a long train journey will invariably... Darling, do it again. What? That was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody does it like you do. Oh, what was that? Oh, oh, take me. Uh, Love me. Uh, I'm on fire. Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that, Holmes. Mary does tend to, um... Ah, uh, yes, I understand, Watson. <clears throat> May I add my congratulations, dear fellow? <laughs> oh, thank you, old chap. One does one's best. Do it again! Hey. <laughs> oh, Sherlock! Oh, my sweet, sweet Sherlock. What? Uh, you, you may remember, Watson, your good lady accompanied us last week to the Merchant of Venice. Yes. Uh, she's obviously dreaming about Sherlock. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, brilliant deduction, Holmes. There's one born every minute. Sorry, Holmes. It says here in the paper there's a Chinaman born every minute. Oh, yes. What's his name, then? Oh, Sherlock, <laughs> take your dear stalker off because it tickles me. <laughs> a dear stalker? There's only one man I know who was a dear stalker. What do you have to say to that then, eh? Uh, I've got it, Watson. What? Take off, meaning to imitate. And of course, the deer stalker, as we know, is a long haired dog. Uh, your wife is obviously dreaming of a dog impersonator whose performance has tickled her. Oh, I see. <laughs> You're a genius, Holmes. Thanks, old chap. You've really put my mind at rest. Glad to be of service, Watson. Yeah. Now, if you don't mind, old chap, I think I'll have a little snooze. Yes? Splendid idea. Mm. Mm. Oh, darling. I was dreaming we were making mad, passionate love. Oh, oh sorry. Not a word? No. <laughs> oh, Sherlock. Oh, Sherlock Holmes! Check it out! Check it out! You hold your shopping list tight in your hand. Your route through the store has been carefully planned. You look for the tins and the jars on the shelf. But since you last came, they've moved somewhere else. So it's back and forth.
You're scared of the eggs and afraid of the cheese And even the pate's riddled with disease You look at the fruit but you still can't decide To risk a listeria or pesticide You say to be safe that it's best to pick The food that's known to be organic It's good for your body and it tastes real nice But it's bad for your pocket cause it's twice the price If you work in the day then you have to fight With all other shoppers who go late at night The store is packed, still you battle on Just to find the milk and all the bread, 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 bread have gone Oh, super, 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 supermarket You drive in your car but there ain't no place to park it It takes twice as long as you think that it might Cause your trolley goes left when you wanna go right With your trolley at the checkout desk And then you realize it's only for six items or less The girl could have told you but she ain't so hot Got a tilt switch done but her brain is not Your stuff tumbles down, you convey your belt But no one ever helps, you got to load it yourself You spent 90 quid but there's still one stack You gotta pay extra for the carrier bag <laughs> Walk out the doors, be a sigh of relief Cause you bought everything you need to last a week But you know in seven days that you'll have to go Back again for the supermarket Cut, 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 calypso Oh, super, 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 supermarket You drive in your car but there ain't no place to park it It takes twice as long as you think that it might When you wanna go I gotta keep these things in my mouth. I got an image to maintain. You know what I mean? Oh, what's on the agenda today? Asti Spumanti's outside. Asti Spumanti? That's swine. Yeah, I know it is. No, oh, no, I mean, that swine. No. Not that swine. <laughs> what does he want? Yeah, he wants to leave, start his own family, ask for your help. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't find his wife that attractive. <laughs> That's not what he means, our father. Uh. He wants to know if you want a hand in his business. Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> He, he just wants to run his own operation down the east side. Uh, well, personally, I think he'd be better off on the west side, but that's another story. <laughs> anyway, Art Father, does he get your blessing? No! I wanted to wipe the bum out. Sorry? <laughs> I wanted to kill Spamandy. Oh, thank goodness for that. <laughs> Nobody muscles in on my territory. See, one of you the guy who tried to take over the franchise on all your tennis clubs. That's right, that's right. And he had to learn the hard way. Nobody touches my tennis racket. <laughs> oh, you fix Pomani and fix him good. Now don't screw up like he did the last time. <laughs> I thought you forgot about that. How could I forgot? Hey, how could I? Like the time I asked you to fix Giorgio Lambretta. I told you to put a horse's head in his bed. And what do you do? You put your wife in bed with him. <laughs> It still frightened him. He paid up. Yeah. You know, Fredo, sometimes I wish you were more like your brother. Who, Michael? No, Sonny. He's dead. Exactly. <laughs> I can't trust you. Like my bodyguard, Luca Braccia. 
He got in trouble with the Doncinellis. You didn't go to Lucas Aid. Lucas Aid? <laughs> Don't start all that again. Who's next? The Cornetto brothers are here for the meeting up, Father. They're here to discuss a new deal between the families. Uh, I don't trust the Cornetto family. But they're Sicilian like us. No, oh, the Cornettos are Neapolitan. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget, it was them what fixed Sonny. Yeah. Had him iced. <laughs> yeah. So you watch every false move. I think they ought to kill me. You're determined to get these Cornettos licked? Sure. <laughs> Show them in. Yeah. Show them in! Yeah. <laughs> uh, this way, please. Just one Cornetto? <laughs> My brother, he's a parking the car. <laughs> so <pa. laughs> Okay, gentlemen, <coughs> sit down. <coughs> <laughs> Vino, our families have been at war for many years, but now the time has come to make peace. <laughs> you know you cannot trust us. <laughs> of course. Proposition to Mark. He's in the case, don't you know? Mm, I don't know. I don't like it, I tell you. My people have always avoided this kind of crack. Huh? Pushing this kind of stuff can get my family a bad name. The police? Huh? They accept the gambling, the booze, and the extortion, but that? I don't know. No. But, Adafari, you've got to move with the times, huh? We got an endless supply of this stuff, and you've got a organization to move it at a street level. Uh, I don't know. What do you think? It's big money, old father. And let's suffice it. If we don't oppose you to somebody else, I will. I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't think this double glazing will catch on at all. <laughs> Just one, Cornetto? Give it to me. <laughs> Sabbath will be appearing next week at the Congress Theatre Eastbourne and we'll be back on the box next Saturday.